So let's say you have a poem or a book or an, an image or an idea, and you say, all right, let's try to write a piece on this. Are you then thinking, let me try to pull the emotion from this, or what is the response that I have to this? How, how do you begin then turning that into a piece of music? Right. So that would also be different for each piece and each poem. So, and, and that would also be something that I, you know, I get, I kind of gather together lists of, of processes. And so I, I would, um, not repeat myself. Um, you know, I might repeat myself like 10 years later or five years later, but not tomorrow. Um, and, and so that part of that would be about how to, let's say, let's say a poem, how to use that poem. And, um, so some, some poems you just want to like set, you know, it's, it's a poem you want to, you want, you want to, you know, you want to set that poem. Uh, one of the last poems I did, I think I just wanted to set it cause I want everybody to hear this poem. I love this poem. And so it's just about, you know, you get into, um, you know, trying to make sure that, that the emotion of the poem is there and, and, and the lyrics, and you might use text painting and things like that. So that's, you know, that's, that's definitely uh, something I've done and, and that I would do. Um, on the other extreme, uh, I have a, um, I did a piece with a poem. I mean, now this is, this is a, this is a, a, uh, experimental poem. So, um, the poem is, um, Japan, it's a Japanese poem. It's a Japanese poet who, who all his poetry is just using the Japanese, uh, numbers one and two. And okay. it's amazing. It looks amazing. And when he recites it, it's like beautiful rhythms. Hmm. <clears throat> so, so now there, I mean, there's not maybe a lot you could say like not a lot of text painting uh, possibilities or, or, uh, or uh, setting, uh, you know, the lyrics. So there I just was using the structure of the poem. So, you know, I took his structure and used that to create, it, it gave me, it gave me the whole piece. You know, hmm. I had to, I had to find, basically I had to, I had to do some assigning of pitches and as obviously, obviously assigning of instruments but it gave me basically the piece is just there, you know, already. I just had to like kind of pull it out. Mm. So that's like totally different use of poetry. Um, so everything in between, you know, but so sometimes using just the rhythms, sometimes trying to get get pitches out of the poems, sometimes maybe just using the, the letters of the words of the poems and or the um, the syllables. You know, there's a lot of musicians that have done that type of thing, like using just the, the syllable, um, I forgot what you call that, but the syllable rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, the rhythms that you get, the number of rhythms and all that. You know, I think I did a Shakespeare piece and and definitely, you know, came up with the phrasing from the actual, you know, um, sonnet. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it sounds like you're you're changing your process for every every, every, every piece. Exactly, exactly. That's kind of amazing. Every piece has a different process. Yeah. So you know, I keep really lists of like how to begin a piece, and so these are just fictitious pieces that haven't happened yet, but maybe someday might happen. You know, so all the ways you can start a piece, all the things that you can use to start a piece, then those things that you that you start a piece with all the ways to develop those things, um, different ways to use a form. And, and so kind of doing all that pre composition work, uh, helps when you're in the moment, you're not so like, Oh no, what do I do? You're like, Oh, well, you know, I've thought about this. I've thought about this. I've done this. It gets a little harder. The more you write, if you don't want to repeat yourself, cause it's like, Oh, uh, Oh, that's a great idea. No, I did that. Oh, no, I did that. You know, it takes a little sure. longer to come up with the new, the new thing. Whereas, like, when you're younger, it's like every time you write a piece, like, oh, I've never done this. I've never done this. I've never done this. You know, after 10 or 15 years, that gets a little, that part gets a little bit harder. Sure. Um, so, yeah, creating these lists has helped to, you know, kind of in the, in moments when I'm not writing a piece to think about it. Uh, yeah. 
So is it something like as you're listening to music or as you're just you, you, you'll start to think about, oh, here's a possibility and just just conceptualize that. What is, you know, here's a beginning to a piece that I could use. Here's a way I could develop it, whatever, and literally write it down and have it around. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. It doesn't. I would say most of the time it doesn't come from listening to music, but 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 it has an occasion. And I would say it would it would come um, from. Uh, you know, like like hearing something and and thinking, oh, I could do that, but over here, like in the right now, I'm listening to it here. You know, so like the example I use with students, I think is um like uh, how many times have you heard an orchestral piece that starts out with eight bars of drums? I'd, let's say it's rare. Anyway, yeah, 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 you know? sure, right. And now it's like eight bars of improv drums on drum set. Okay, now we're getting like even much rarer, you know? Sure. Mm -hmm. So that's like something in one area that's pretty common. You know, you go to, go to a jam session, you'll hear drums play eight bars out front sometime that night probably, you know? So, mm -hmm. but then you take that thing and you put it in another world and it's totally... All of a sudden, it's like, wow, that would sound really cool. <clears throat> and it could, sure. you know, it can lead to, uh, it could lead to, oh, well, I'm actually going to have somebody improvise, you know, but then that can lead to practical concerns like, does anybody, is there a drum set player in the orchestra? Oh, there's not. Okay. All right. Well, or is there someone that can improvise? Oh, no, there's not. Okay. So then, you know, it means like, okay, now I'm going to write a percussion intro that sounds like a live improvised drum set solo you know so and that so that sounds that that could be amazing sure right it's but it's pretty normal in in one place and then another place it's like whoa yeah right yeah hmm, interesting and uh, do you um so what do you have as a routine do you do you wake up and every day you have a certain amount of time that you write or how do you then go about creating new music just from from the ideas I I wish I could do that. Um, I don't have you know. I've never really figured out the um, the lifestyle choices to make that happen. Sure. Um, what I um, what I just did when, like when I was in New Mexico, but what 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 I and I haven't done that in a while. But I there was about ten years where I did this every year. Where I would go to a um, like an artist retreat for about a month and just write, like not play drums or anything, just just write, hmm. and and there of course you know that's that's uh, when I'm waking up in the morning and, and writing, um, and uh, and what that and of course the rest of the year was not like that at all because I'm playing and I'm teaching and traveling and. So the that period would just feed the rest of the year. Like mm. think I would start things and finish them later, um, and gather together s lots of things. You know that I didn't necessarily finish. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I actually would like finish it, but I'm like I don't know what this is or what it's for. And then you know, like six months later, I'm like, hey, remember that thing? You know, like. That could go with this thing that somebody just asked me to do that I don't have time to do <laughs> right now. <laughs> but hey, I already started it, so you know, that kind of thing. So that's 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 still kind of where I am. Um, but I would say the other thing is it's just um, you know very very intense periods of writing. Okay. okay. So you like set, you, you set, set that aside, aside for yourself. You say this month. I'm going to prepare to do this and then I'm going to dive in and get in the zone and get wild. I, I wish it, yeah, it's never, it's not even that good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if I think of, like, I think about the last record, the song, um, songs you like a lot. Um, you know, I was just, any time I had like a few minutes, I was thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. For, for a long time. Well, like six months, let's say. And then, you know, 
I remember talking to Alan Ferber like about like a couple weeks, like maybe it's like I was going to Europe. The the we recorded it in Europe, and I went I went to Europe about two weeks ahead of time, mm-hmm. and then I and I talked to I talked to Alan maybe three or four weeks ahead of time, and I was like, yeah, I'm doing this record. Um, you know, I haven't really started writing the music. I'm just, I'm just, I just started writing the music, you know. And he was like, oh, that's so awesome. And I was like, no, that's not <laughs> awesome. This is, this is not an awesome feeling. This is not a good feeling. It's not where I, it's not, it's not a good feeling. But, you know, on the plane, on the trains, I mean, it got really intense because a little week before I was teaching. So I'd be teaching like, you know, let's say nine to four and then just, back to the hotel room, you know, until eight the next morning, you know, and, and that, you know, sure. Um, that's not my idea of fun, but, um, well, you got you know, it done. I mean, I it seems it. to work. Yeah. But well, so, I did. It. Yeah. So the deadlines, <laughs> I guess, are, are sort of your friend in that respect. Deadlines are key. Deadlines are very important. Yeah. Without deadlines, I don't think I could get anything done. Sure. Yeah, for sure. 